I had always loved tiki stuff, uh, mostly. And even with that, that when I say that, it's it's you know as much as anyone we Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, Gilligan's Island, you know that type. Yeah. That was my my extent of tiki. Um, but I was always an Adventureland kid, Indiana Jones, Tarzan, King Kong, Jungle Cruise, you know, that stuff was, was me all the way. So one of the things I decided to do during uh, quarantine back in, uh, what, the first issue was in March. March. Uh, yeah, well, I started quarantine in March, and then we had the first issue out in May, but uh, I, I was sitting around and I thought, it's time to do something that scares me. <laughs> that I've never done before. What should it be? And it turned out I was it was going to be a comic book. So I did a comic book and uh we did five issues which That's I so happen cool. which I happen to have here. With, 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 with yourself with a, a a comic book version of yourself. Uh well we kind of we kind of we kind of a little bit, but we kind of did more of a Princess Bride Dread Pirate Roberts thing with oh, it, yeah, to yeah, where okay. Uh, the the hero's name is Trader Brandon, but obviously it doesn't look like me. <laughs> He's in way better shape than I am. How does uh, everyone know? You don't have right? to tell them that. Be well, I know. I can block out your picture right now. And you right? Know. <laughs> I know. I know because every one of my friends reminded me when every issue came out going, you know, that doesn't look like you at all. Um, we'll just deepen your voice a little with the, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I took the Dread Pirate Roberts approach of, well, there was several trader brandons over the years <laughs> i just do it now in the year 2020 that's great um, so yeah so we came up with this uh i came up with this story with a friend of mine mark walsh who uh was a director at pixar and and uh did, directed party saurus rex and worked on tons of films up there and he and i loved the adventure genre and all that so we came up with this fun story and then had a, a great illustrator named dan showing who uh, is an illustrator for IDW Comics, so he primarily does Ghostbusters, the official Ghostbusters comic for the last nice. 11, 12 years. Uh, it does Transformers, Back to the Future, G.I. Joe, all their big titles. I've heard of those. And yeah, small films, uh, small projects, small IPs. And uh, But again, if you want to find some silver lining in the middle of a pandemic, it's the fact that nobody was working. Or, yeah. or I should say had more free time. People were still working. <laughs> That's a little uh, bit more, yeah. But yeah. more free time. More uh, respectful. To spare. Yeah, yeah more yeah. free time. And uh, so he said yes to it. And we did five issues. And yeah, they're, they're very much, uh, you know, to, to harken back to an older, older time of, mm -hmm. of pulp uh, dime novels, you know, the old old ads on the back and uh, <laughs> I love it. all all the issues look uh you can see some of the corners you know they look yeah. like they're old and and that was just the the look we wanted to do so we did that and then uh and then this guy here matthew uh ordered a couple and found them when he was out on on tour which i'm sure he will tell you about so but. so the two of you guys yeah i want to i want to hear that story but yeah. who who pitched it to who I guess where is he I on the boxes? I'm it's different for now. different people. People, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I pitched it to Brandon because <laughs> I was on tour. And yeah, tell uh, us that whole story. Well, I play in a band called Electric Guest, and yes. we pre quarantine were on tour. Uh, we did a European and US tour before everything kind of went on lockdown. So, on tour at night, I would be kind of like scrolling on my phone on his website, looking at his Doom Altar mug, which is amazing. And he's his got some great merch. Glasses. Yeah, he's got amazing merch. And said, let's let's get that out of the way right now. TraderBrandon.com is that? .com. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, and I was going to buy some glasses, saw that he had this comic book. Um, and when I got home, obviously all of our touring was canceled from mm. what we had booked and got a few comics in the mail and loved it and i personally have always wanted to make my own exotica record but didn't really know what or what form it would be or where it would go so i kind of put all that energy into the comic and like sent him two tracks at first and then waited and then he wrote me back and was like this is cool you should do some more and i was like <laughs> okay cool i'm gonna get issue two and then i like yeah, i was like got issue are, two, well, and then great yeah kept going so, kept going so you literally took one of the comic books and started scoring it, basically. Is that yeah. how? Yeah. But I, I love what you guys did and the sound effects and things that you put in there. I mean, it really you're turning a comic book into a sort of interactive experience. It's well. Did, you, did that all evolve, or how did that whole? 
we cool just again i think in matthew correct me if i'm wrong but i think we just kind of were like what do we want it to be you know if we were buying this what would we want it to be and then you know like i said we we thought about doing it as a seven inch album which then i i think i probably was like well let's put the comic with it and you would you know turn the pages and the little chimes and all that. <laughs> a little sound yeah. yeah yeah and then uh and then the 12 inch was was cheaper to do so we did that but even on the back uh in the track listings you know we'll have uh uh, the journey down river track two, but it says, Oh, well, you start that track on issue one, page one. So all the tracks are called out to where you should start them when you're reading the comic and it'll that's play great. you through, play you through that scene. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's like very cool. point of reference. what happens like, with a couple nerdy creative guys on, uh, you know, in quarantine, <laughs> yeah. you're going to yeah, get some fun like stuff. The, the go back to your chair trader that starts with a good gun click like a yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. No, like just as so you know where you are kind of if you're reading and also i think some of that is like the sound effects are certainly like used melodically in places when yes. i didn't either really know what to do or if it's just kind of like a a breather from any kind of melody just to put you back into some sort of atmospheric vibe um yeah it's just super helpful to like kind of put you immediately there the well-dressed man is busy. Yeah, that one's got some fun it. sound effects. That's got in some them. Sound effects. Okay, let's let's go ahead and play that. I gotta I gotta take off my headphones again. Let's... <laughs> 